Welcome to the program, folks. This is, once again, the inaugural State Secrets here on X, formerly known as Twitter, something I still call Twitter. Today's topic is extremism in the U.S. military, a topic that is given an undue amount of attention. Now, don't get me wrong. Extremism, extremism is uncalled for in the U.S. military and should be rooted out at all times. However, the amount of attention focused on this by leftist political authorities that divert resources from other issues that also deserve attention, and perhaps even more importantly, like sexual assault and sexual harassment, among other things, devote all this time and effort to this topic to give the impression that the U.S. military is overrun with extremists, when in fact that is far from the case. I'm going to talk about some historical instances here, also about what's currently happening in the U.S. military. Now, the Department of Defense recently released an investigation last week where they investigated 183 allegations of extremist activity among among service members advocating for the overthrow of the U.S. government. This is according to a Pentagon internal audit that was published last week. Now, it's shocking that any member of the service would actually take an oath to support and defend the Constitution and then advocate overthrowing the U.S. government. It makes no sense whatsoever, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. Let me just give a listen in here, make sure I can hear myself over there. Were they? In- yeah, it is working. Okay, good. Let's put that in context. 78 cases. There were 183 allegations. So clearly over 100 of the allegations were unfounded, according to Department of Defense investigators across the military services, but 78 cases had merit to them. That's a cor- a course across, of course, across a force of 1.4 million active duty service members, 78 cases, 78. One could be dangerous, but 78 out of 1.4 million, that's a ludicrously low number to put this much attention on. Of course, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin made a big stink about this when he first became the Secretary of Defense demanding that the military stand down for a day of extremism. Did we stand down for the faulty condition of Osprey aircraft, which are costing its lives or service members on an all too frequent basis? Normally aviation incidents do get a stand down, safety stand down. 1.4 million active duty service members. And over the course of the previous year, the Department of Defense investigated 183 allegations of extremist activity and has identified just 78 cases. I'm not dismissing those cases. Now, bear in mind that that includes an additional 800,000 reserve component between the National Guard, the Air National Guard, and the reserve component forces. So 2.2 million Americans who took an oath to support and defend the Constitution, there are 78 cases that they're aware of. And that doesn't mean there aren't other cases. Now, let's put this in context. In that 2.2 million folks, there were 8,942 reports of sexual assault involving service members, either as victims or subjects of investigation in 2022. 8,942 reports of sexual assault, 78 cases of alleged extremism. Now, this isn't new. The U.S. military has long had a history uh, of incidences of, of, of racism, of bigotry, and other nonsense that's perpetrated its ranks. But that's a reflection of the draft and bringing people at large into society. But in a all professional force, we should do a better job of weaning out those who are not the folks we want in uniform who don't support and defend the Constitution. Now, in my career in the U.S. Army, which started in 1983 and ran until 2019, when I retired as a colonel, there was an event that took place in the 1990s, which kind of shocked many of us in the U.S. Army. We were shocked to hear this. In 1995, extremism in the U.S. military was thrown into the national spotlight when three white Army paratroopers at Fort Bragg were arrested for the murder of Michael James and Jackie Burden a black couple who they shot and killed in downtown Fayetteville, which is adjacent to Fort Bragg in North Carolina. Now, two of the paratroopers, James Burmeister and Malcolm Wright, were sentenced to life in prison. Another 19 Fort Bragg soldiers were discharged for taking part in neo-Nazi activities. That's not entirely accurate. Not all of them were involved in neo-Nazi activities, but the case is, regardless, the fact that they were talking about it and they had some association with it, they were discharged, 22 people involved in this. Now, the case prompted the U.S. Army to conduct a worldwide inquiry into racism in its ranks. I remember this. We talked about this in 1995. DOD policy, of course, bars members of the armed forces from actively participating in groups that espouse racism, white supremacy, or any other activity does not that violates a person's civil rights. Uh, that also includes black supremacy. And of course, the media forget to mention that. Um, and But it doesn't bar membership in those organizations, at least it didn't at the time. So after this event at Fort Bragg in which a black couple was murdered, Congress held hearings. There was an army task force on extremism. 
Now, that task force formed on December 12th of 1995, and it said it didn't find that individuals or small informal groups of individuals hold extremist views. It did find that small, that individuals and small groups uh, did hold extremist views. Now, allegations or suspicions of widespread concerted recruitment of soldiers for extremist causes and participation by soldiers in organized extremist activities were not substantiated. Why is that? Because we had leftists who were running around claiming that the army and the military were actively recruiting extremists, which is nonsense. And of course, this predates this. You go back to Timothy McVeigh or postdates this with Timothy McVeigh. Timothy McVeigh, of course, was an extremist who violated, who advocated uh, violence and blew up the uh, Murrow building there in Oklahoma City. Uh, He, of course, served in the U.S. military. But there were allegations because of these events that the Pentagon was actively seeking extremists, which is nonsense. I spent 36 and a half years in the Army, and I saw none of this ever, having served in three continents and worked with every military service. Now, a 2006 report by the Southern Poverty Law Center, and that should tell you everything you need to know about it, said that large numbers of neo-Nazis and skinhead extremists continue to infiltrate the ranks of the world's best trained and best equipped fighting force, talking about the U.S. military and the Army in particular. Now, of course, there was no credence or validity to that 2006 report by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Nonetheless, they attempted to smirch the military. Now, here's an example of a Navy veteran who had a very different experience than I did. Reuben Keith Green uh, said, it's dis- at the time, said it's disheartening to see the military struggling decade after decade to deal with racism and extremism's ranks. At the time, Mr. Green, 64, a retired Navy lieutenant commander, uh, was a part of generations of his family who joined the military, both his father and grandfather served. He said he, did- he grew disillusioned with the military and what he believed were broken promises that all servicemen and women are equal and be treated with the same regardless of race. Well, obviously, he served in a different era than I did. He said he entered and witnessed countless acts of racism through his time in the service. He entered in Valentine's Day, 1975, eight years before me, and left in the mid-1990s. Uh, he said some fellow service members proudly display Confederate flags, express white supremacist views, and with no retribution. In 2017, he wrote a book called Black Officer, White Navy that detailed his personal experiences. Now, I'm. it's unfortunate to hear that um, Lieutenant Commander Green dealt with this. In 36 and a half years in the Army, having served in dozens of countries, well, having served in over 70 countries and having been based in over a dozen countries, stationed in those places, served multiple combat tours, peacekeeping operations, worked at the D.C. level, at the Pentagon, at the Defense Intelligence Agency, the National Security Agency. I never saw any of this. I never once saw anybody display the battle flag of the Army of Northern Virginia once in my entire career anywhere that I can recollect. And I never, ever saw any of the stuff he's talking about. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Doesn't mean there aren't these sort of people in our midst. The U.S. military itself found 78 people this year who were responsible for extremist views in the U.S. military. And of course, back there in the Fort Bragg case in 1995 resulted in, of course, those dismissals from the military and prosecutions. But this story in the Stars and Stripes came out this week, and it's worth noting and talking about. Nearly 80 service members suspected of advocating to overthrow U.S. government, according to a Department of Defense investigation. This story by Matthew Adams in the Stars and Stripes on December 2nd, 2023. In addition to the 78 allegations involving troops wanting to overthrow the U.S. government, the IG, the Inspector General for Duty, reported 44 instances of service members advocating for terrorism and 22 cases of service members advocating or committing violence to achieve political, religious, or discriminatory goals. The allegations were made about troops advocating or committing violence to deprive people of their rights. That is very disturbing, but it is hardly a reflection of the U.S. military. doesn't mean it should be ignored, but it should be taken in context. Once again, as I mentioned back at Fort Bragg in the 1990s, uh, three white soldiers were charged in the killing of two black residents of Fayetteville. And of course, two of them got life sentences, James Norman Burmeister at private and Malcolm Wright, a private of the 82nd Airborne, were sentenced to life imprisonment for their role in the murder. The Washington Post at that time reported that 22 soldiers at Fort Bragg were tied to extremist groups. Back at that time, of course, uh, the Secretary of the Army was Togo West Jr. He called for worldwide investigation of extremist activities in Army ranks. And the findings, as I mentioned earlier, found there were no patterns of the military recruiting these sort of people or of large groups associated with U.S. military and the Army in particular. Now, Fort Bragg restricted some soldiers after this in a special forces unit. 350 special forces troops restricted to their compound after superiors found swastikas painted the doors of those rooms occupied by black soldiers. This occurred in 1996. So stamping this problem took, stamping it out, took some time at Fort Bragg. It wasn't an instantaneous effort. It took some time. They were restricted to their barracks because of this conduct. And then, as I mentioned, um, this stuff 
you know, you'll find isolated instances and cases of this taking place. But here's another one. A soldier who sought ethnic cleansing in the U.S. pleads guilty on firearms charges. This one's from April of 2023 at Fort Bragg. A Fort Bragg soldier who plotted to commit mass murder against racial minorities pled guilty to weapons charges and faces a decade in prison. Noah Anthony, 23, had a goal to physically remove as many black and brown people from Hope, Cumberland, Roberson, and Scott counties by whatever means need to be, according to Manifesto. Court documents said he also an American flag with a swastika in place of the blue field and stars and various neo-Nazi and white supremacist patches. Anthony was arrested at one of Fort Bragg's gates in March of last year. Now, again, I never saw this activity, but in 36 and a half years in the Army, I was never stationed at Fort Bragg. And this is, again, where it's cropped up. As I mentioned, those two folks earlier were convicted of that murder of the couple back in 1995. That conviction didn't play, take, take place until February of 1997. Now, Lloyd Austin made a lot of waves when he became the Secretary of Defense because he said that we have extremism in our ranks. Well, I'm going to refute that, General Austin. We don't have extremism in our ranks. We have extremism in our political leaders. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, 78 cases of this, plus the added 22 and the 44, we're still talking about 100 cases for 2.2 million Americans serving in uniform, active reserve component. Contrast that with 8,942 reports of sexual assault. Now, today's military, if you report someone that's a white supremacist, you get lots of brownie points. People want that to be reported. So it seems to reason that anytime somebody comes across it who doesn't like it or finds it abhorrent, they're going to report it. By contrast, sexual assault and rape are often not reported because of embarrassment, shame, fear of retribution, and retaliation. But 8,900 cases of sexual assault in the U.S. military in fiscal 2022, just 78 cases of extremism. Why is the military obsessed with extremism? We should root it out, but we should also root out sexual assault and all the other crimes. Now, I would bring you the total list of crimes committed by service members, but that information is not publicly available. You must request it from the Criminal Investigation Division of the United States Army to get it from the U.S. Army. So you have to compile it from multiple sources. Didn't have it for this broadcast, but I can tell you that the number of shoplifting, the murders, the rapes, the child molestation, the spousal abuse, the drunken driving, those numbers add up to far more, sadly, of course, far more than 78 cases of extremism in the U.S. military. Once again, this obsession with extremism started with General Lloyd Austin, of course. Now, I don't know why, maybe because he's a black officer, maybe not, or maybe he's just He's very attuned to this, but Secretary Lloyd Austin, the third convened military chiefs and civilian secretaries of armed forces in early 2021 to begin intensifying Pentagon efforts to combat white supremacies and right-wing extremism in the ranks. I see that we've got chat going there. I just saw one show up in the chat window. So why white supremacy? Why not black supremacy? Why are we not concerned about all supremacy and all abhorrent extremist views? This is an effort, once again, 78 cases, which have some merit, to besmirch the vast majority of those who serve in uniform who happen to be light skin, white pigmentation. He ordered that the stand down, one day stand down, take place back in 2021. And here's the press release from that. Today, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin signed a memo directing commanding officers and supervisors at all levels to select the date within the next 60 days to conduct a one-day stand-down to discuss extremism in the ranks of their personnel. Duty Instruction 1325.06, handling dissent and protest activities among members of the armed forces, provides the core tenets to support each such discussions. Leaders have the discretion to tailor discussions with the personnel as appropriate, but such discussions should include the importance of our oath of office, discrimination of impermissible behaviors, description, and procedures for reporting suspected actual extremist behaviors in accordance with the DOD. Now, I don't know why anyone needed to remind anyone of their oath. I know my oath to support and defend the Constitution, to obey all lawful orders of the officers and those appointed above me. Pretty simple. Fidelity to the Constitution, not to a leader, to the Constitution. And I didn't need to be reminded of that. And should I ever come across any conduct that's contrary or reprehensible, I'd simply go to military police and report it. Or in the case of a smaller installation like Carlisle Barracks, to the Department of Defense officials, police, and report the incident. And you know, I'd have an obligation to tell my chain of command as well. So why do they have to have a day of stand down for that? Now, a long story, a hit piece in the Associated Press came out about this in December of 2021 after Austin had ordered all these events. And this is in December 2021, detailing a long history of the military that didn't exist 
in my lifetime, a military that has long since been gone, running back decades of abuses that were stamped out in the US military and did not occur that I ever saw, but they use it to besmirch the military and just pretty sad stuff. Decades of DOD efforts to fail to stamp out bias and extremism. I would argue that a military that was racially segregated in 1947, that was integrated by executive order by President Truman, a military that had race riots in the 1970s and white officers beaten up by black soldiers in their barracks at Fort Hood, a military that had a long history of this sort of extremism and bigotry and racism, a military that also saw many of its officers resign to join an insurrection in 1861, leaving the United States military to join the Confederate States uh, in their effort to break away from the United States, that this military has come a long way. And this obsession with denigrating the military is unfortunate. It is unfortunate. An AP investigation found that despite new rules, racism and extremism remain an ongoing concern in the military. Well, the same as breathing oxygen is an ongoing concern for homo sapiens. Taking in nutrition is an ongoing concern for homo sapiens in the fact that they have to do it. Yes, there are extremists. There will always be idiots and extremists. You can't weed everything out. It's human nature. Plus, people come in who aren't extremists get radicalized. There's no discussion here of Islamic fanaticists like the major Hassan who murdered people at Fort Hood for his Islamic jihad attitudes. Why is that extremism not included in here? This is focused exclusively on white nationalism, white supremacy, a valid concern. But so is black supremacy. So is Islamic jihad by members of the U.S. military. Or Puerto Rican nationalism, which has resulted in terrorism in America. Yeah, this is so pathetic. The investigation shows new guidelines do not address ongoing disparities in military justice under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Now, from this, what they're talking about is a disparity in sentencing and prosecution of military offenders, and they're giving all sorts of information for the Southern Poverty Law Center. And what they're neglecting to put into context is who's doing the crimes and why they're being prosecuted. They're not showing specific cases of leniency based on race or ethnicity. There is a difference when it comes to experience and age in the military. But that's the bottom line with that, folks. So yeah, anyway, uh, extremism in the US military, a concern, but not nearly the concern that Lloyd Austin and the Department of Defense and the woke Biden administration want the world to believe. They want to denigrate the military. I would tell you that just finding 78 instances of extremism in a force of 2.2 million over the course of a year is pretty impressively low. It should be zero, make no mistake. But 78 instances of extremism, particularly when you're not even looking for black supremacy or Islamic jihadist, you're just looking for white supremacy. And given the force is overwhelmingly white, that is a pretty small figure. Again, not to dismiss anyone, one of those people could be very dangerous and harm others or poison the minds of members of the military. But this is not the crisis that the Southern Poverty Law Center has historically tried to portray it as, that the woke Biden administration claims it is. Do you hear the Biden administration talking about sexual assault? Is that a front burner, a high button issue, a priority for the Department of Defense? No, it's not. Not according to this. Their focus is on extremism. And I'll tell you that their concerns are misplaced. While all these views and crimes must be investigated and eliminated from our military, the obsessive focus on demonizing people based on their skin is in and of itself racist, looking for boogeymen that do not exist. Now, at the same time, leaders have responsibility for understanding their unit and knowing the pulse of their unit and of their soldiers, airmen, soldiers, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, and Merchant Marine. You must be familiar with them. And should you come across these sort of views, you must deal with it immediately and stamp it out. That is the role of commanders, not of weak-willed politicians looking to score points by racially dividing and bifurcating society. You're a disgrace to this nation. Stop it. General Austin, you had a stand-down day two years ago. What were the number of extremist people revealed in the previous three years prior to your stand-down? Were the figures higher? If so, I would make an argument that it must have had a positive impact because the numbers have declined. If the numbers have increased, then perhaps your approach is not the right one. Maybe it is.
We don't know. Department of Defense, not forthcoming with this information, but Stars and Stripes, a newspaper to serve U.S. military, happily runs about reporting on things that are negative about the military. And that's fine. It's the fourth estate. Its mission is to hold the government accountable. But a bit of objectivity and context would be helpful in discussing these issues. That's the bottom line here. Objectivity and context. Once again, 78 cases of service members advocating for the overthrow of the U.S. government, none of whom should be in uniform, all of whom should be in leg irons or deported. That's out of 2.2 million service members, 1.4 million active duty and 800,000 reservists and National Guardsmen. By contrast, there were 8,942 reports of sexual assault involving service members either as victims or as subjects of investigation in fiscal year 2022, the same time period. Where's the real problem here? The real problem is with woke politicians and for commanders being ignorant and not cognizant of what's going on in their units. It is their responsibility to weed this out. Again, the incident, the 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 experience that uh, Lieutenant Commander Green had in the U.S. Navy, not one I experienced. I served three tours in Germany, one tour in Italy. I served in Africa, tours of duty in Tunisia, Liberia, Botswana, Malawi, Niger, Mauritania, Uganda, Ethiopia. I served in Bosnia, in the Balkans, in Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, at the Pentagon. Iowa State University, U.S. Army War College, the Defense Intelligence Agency, National Security Agency, Fort Wachuca, Fort Meade. Never once did I see any of these things. Ever. Again, I'm not burying my head in the sand. It doesn't mean they do not exist. But devote resources to stopping the abuse of service members by other service members. This is corrosive and caustic to unit cohesion and trust. When someone in your unit can sexually assault you and get away with it or intimidate you or make unwanted advances towards you, male or female, that is a very corrosive situation. And this isn't like the workplace. This isn't like working for IBM or Disney where, oh, my feelings are hurt. I'm uncomfortable. This is a place where the people who are appointed above you make decisions that mean you live or die. You see your family again or you don't. Your welfare is their responsibility. If it's abused, this is a crime that must be exposed. And that's responsibility commanders. There you have it, folks. That's the first ever state secrets. Feel free to leave your comments, post them behind on this. If you like, appreciate it. And we'll catch you next time here on X for State Secrets with Chris Wyatt. Cheers, everybody. Thank you so much for your time and your consideration.